Welcome back to our conversation about really the crisis in community journalism and community news with Dan Kennedy of Northeastern. He's the co-author of What Works in Community News along with Ellen Clegg. And Dan, it, you often mention trust as a crucial ingredient in making local news viable. If I had a dime for every time in the last 40 years, I've had someone bend my ear about how they don't trust my profession. Uh, believe me, I, I would have been in the luxury box with Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl. Probably not, actually, but I, I'd be a rich man. What is the key to establishing and building trust? What we have found, and there are actually academic studies that back this up, is that at the local level, people are far more likely to trust uh, their local news organization than they are to trust the, the nat especially national cable news, for instance, which thrives on polarization and anger. And I'm sure you know from being in your business that local TV news is, is much more trusted than other forms of news. At the community level, what we're hoping is that if you can get people to re-engage with news about their communities, not only only can that build trust in the news organization, but it can build trust among different parts of the population. Uh, people find that if they can cooperate and understand each other on local issues, then maybe there isn't that much that divides them on, for instance, the latest Trump news. Uh, you really have to start at that grassroots level and build trust out from there. Now you say in your book that the problem of news deserts, places that just have no uh, local news, and that can actually apply to communities that do still have a paper. Some of them are these zombie papers yes. that just recycle press releases. You say the problem will probably get worse, yet you're optimistic overall. Why? We're optimistic in the long term. Uh, over the next few years, it seems likely that uh the chains owned by corporations and hedge funds will continue to close papers. But the rise of these independent local news outlets is really a movement, and it continues to grow. But although Alan and I are very optimistic, um, one of the problems that we're seeing is that the affluent suburbs are doing very well with this. Urban communities of color, rural areas, that's a tougher nut to crack. And and I think that's where we need to concentrate our efforts uh, over the next few years. Well, one bright spot in that area is the Bay State Banner. My former colleague Ron Mitchell yes. uh, and uh, colleagues have, have taken over that paper after many years of uh, being run by Mel Miller and uh, I'm wishing them all, uh, good luck. We're just about out of time, Dan, but I want our viewers who are hopefully concerned, if they are concerned about uh, shortage of news or the quality of the local news in their community, what can they do about it? Well, you know, Ellen and I really believe that anything can work and anything can fail. And uh, what people can do at their own uh, community level is to just start organizing and start looking into the different options for providing news in their communities. There are cases, not in the book, but we we had a guest on our podcast recently. She just writes a newsletter for her local town, and she does a very good job with it, and is providing a lot of news that they wouldn't get otherwise. By the way, it's Burlington, Massachusetts. The Burlington Buzz, written by Nikki Cadillac, uh, doing great work. Now, there's a lot she can't get to because it's so small, but you have to start somewhere, and you can build from there. You mentioned the podcast. How can people tune into that? if they want to check it out. People can find out about our book and podcast and also updates that we write about developments in local news at whatworks.news. Whatworks.news. Congrats on the book. Good luck with what you're doing. It's God's work. Appreciate Thank you, John. It. I appreciate it.